Hi, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. Welcome to the next lesson in our uh, Dutch Master Series. This time, so it was the last lesson, lesson five, we were taking a look at the uh, grapes and putting some of those uh, grisailles onto the grapes. And we needed to get up here into towards our center of interest now, which is up towards the center, these big, beautiful uh, middling, that middling rose, centering rose here. Now, first, let me just kind of explain here. Here I have a black and white. I just printed off a black and white here onto my black and white uh, Xerox printer. This is one of the detail photos. This is the detail photo of the center three roses uh, that is uh, on the website and, uh, you know, and included into these lessons. And what I did is I just put it, printed it out on a regular black and white photocopy machine here. And what this will do is give me a very good idea here of some of the size that I'm going to be uh, painting in this particular area. Now, one thing that we must remember with Grisai, you know, uh, like in the center of this rose here, this beautiful rose, is gonna be uh, more of a reddish tone inside there and those reds which are darker those reds that we'll be using are down as to a three and a four those are going to when we start glazing those on that's going to drop those uh, those uh, values down so it's one thing to keep in mind when you're grisaille painting like i explained on the grapes sometimes you know the grapes not quite as much because the grape colors are overall light and the yellows and the yellow greens that we're going to be using on those are very light but some of the other colors that you use in glaze, especially if you're talking about, say, a morning glory that is that has the blues, that are going to use some of those Prussian-type uh, blues that are very dark, down into your twos and threes. When you start glazing those on, those are going to drop those values down quite a bit. And so you may need to step up a little bit. It is always best, and always remember this, it's always best to be on the light side. So if you're if you can't decide between a value five or a value six, it's best to go up to a value six and put it in a little lighter because it can always glaze down. But like I say, we can adjust all of this later on. This is just to give you ideas and ballpark er, ballparks of colors. I you don't need to get specific yet. When we finally get into the color layers, we get very specific. Not that they don't. They do. They do get uh, pretty specific with some of these values that they have in here, so they don't have to use quite as much color but anyway here's our big centering our middling flower this is called the middling flower and Mignon de Heem and, and a lot of the Dutch painters uh, really started out a lot of the flowers with taking something that usually uh, in towards the viburnum family or a mum or uh, sometimes they would use like we did uh, uh, Van Alst we did a big marigold um, in the center those they have the petals that radiate out those are called middling flowers. So this is more of a middling flower here. Um, they have a rose that looks very much like this. It's hard to tell. Is it a mum or is it another rose what they call the Gwelder rose? But in, in either case, we have our map out here and what flowers we're going to be working on here today. We might get up to six. We're basically going to be doing three, two, and one, maybe out to 25 and down into five and down into this area down in here. We're going to be working this area of our painting right in here, establish some of the interest. Now I have my uh, value scale out which we have that but you know we already have some of the values kind of quickly assigned in those areas and so we might not need that too much but this is going to be very helpful this is something I would suggest that you do it helps you see it sometimes printing it out in color is nice you know I have the big huge color one there you know right off to the side here that I can look at and but sometimes having it out into a black and white when you're doing detail is is nice as well as far as the colors i'm just again like we did last time i'm putting them out on my palette here's my one three six eight and ten um one of the things that uh um you know we do with grisaille later on like when uh when um the grisaille or the actual scale um is and when Munsell creates a scale in 1910 he said anything from basically six and above would have a little yellow, a little warming tone to it. But, you know, that that was done in the latter part of the, or the beginning part of the 20th century. So we, uh, you know, they don't know this all the way back into the 18th, 17th and 18th century. They're just painting with blacks and whites and creating the grays. But that's something that, uh, you know, we do try to keep in the back of our mind what we would do today is a little bit different. So in some Grisaille paintings, as we're starting to work with, the, especially the warms and the lights, you'll get up to, you'll start seeing me add yellow. 
sometimes, not all the time. Um, but so I put this out here and then we'll just adjust those values for, for where we are and, and, and as we're going. And again, I'm just going to use some water. I have just a little container of water out here. Some of you are pretty shocked because you don't see me paint with water hardly anymore. Um, I'm going to use my smaller brushes, you know, in the brush supply list, we said, uh, the uh, like the two filbert the two flat you can use like a small watercolor around i like these uh the fusion ones because they are the synthetic squirrel and they did use a lot of squirrel brushes that was a brush of choice uh was the squirrel brush so uh using something like the fusion is very very nice or a natural hair whatever you have uh, i painted them for with the synthetics they work just as nice they get a nice chisel edge so but i like the fusions because they're very very soft and so it's we didn't have them years ago and now we do and i it's my brush of choice for everything now in the uh, um, in this particular lesson is a, a more detailed pattern of this area. Remember, on the original pattern, we didn't have quite as much detail. I said it'd come later. Now, and I what I did is I printed it out for the size that I have. We have a couple of different sizes there. I had to print it out for the size that I had. Checked it against the size that I did. Now, some of you've adjusted it a little bit. You may have to adjust this pattern just a bit, but I sized it. To, uh, I, I tried to side as, as best as I could. It might be off a little, just adjust it a little. Um, but I tried to size it for each of your different sizes of your pattern. But this is a little bit more detailed pattern. Now, when you look at something like this with all of these lines, this can get to be a little bit, um, uh, let me say, confusing. You know, One of the things I would suggest, like right in here, you have three layers of petals. Maybe get rid of that center one. You know a center one's going to be there. So you don't have to have it there. Now, I went ahead and put all of these on. Uh, I've looked at this pattern so much time, but it is confusing. And sometimes it's better just to go through and eliminate all the small little tiny things and just make a few lines of the ones that get an area and then divide that area up. You know, there's another petal in there. And and uh, so you don't get too lost in there. And that's really going to happen on this uh, this big uh, mum or Gwelder Rose that's here. And not so much on these others. But there's a lot going on in these things in here and that can really get you lost. This is our center of interest. We're going to take quite a bit of time to work it out. So I, I took the pattern and what I did is I transferred the pattern out onto just like we've done before i transferred it out onto clear uh clear plastic and then when i went to go transfer it i set a piece of tracing paper over it and then used uh, a hard point pin and as i go over that with the pin it makes the mark and i know exactly what i've transferred and what i haven't transferred so i transfer it like that now if you're transferring with light you have no problem seeing it but if you're using the darker transfer paper you like i, I, I said to you before if you're putting the gray graphite underneath something like this and it it doesn't you can't always see your pattern lines through it it gets very very difficult to see the lines so that's why I use a second little piece of of um, tracing paper here and what I do is I put down the transfer paper that I have and then the uh, so the black would go down and then a piece of tracing paper then this piece of clear and you can see very easily now you can see your pattern through without a single problem so that black is clouded by just a light piece of transfer paper here so what i've done is and you have to and i've transferred this already and uh, i've lined it up to the uh, let me just kind of separate this here for a second i've kind of lined it up here to uh, where the line should go and i'll set this right down so I, I've taken my pattern, I've kind of lined it up just into the ballpark of where those objects are going to be in, uh, you know, into the painting. Just kind of get that area there. And then what I did was I went ahead and started to transfer now in the little white parts up here into these flowers that are here. You have no problem. We can see those pretty clearly. This is, you know, on your one and three and your two, your one, two and three right up in here. Uh, as you get down into some of these areas out here, may have a hard time. And that's where I switched to white. So I put some of these out here on with white and these up in here on with dark. I just switched it uh, depending on what it shows up. And up here on um, this one, our flower number six up here, I uh, use the dark. You could use light also. Both of them will, uh, will work equally as well. So transfer it out onto the... Um, onto the uh, plastic again, transfer your detail, line that up, line the outside edge up basically where you are on your pattern. You might have to adjust it a little bit, you know, up and down, uh, just a little bit, and then go ahead and transfer your pattern 
depending on you know a dark color or a light color whatever shows up the best for you uh, in that particular area so with that let's get into some of the painting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over now yeah like I say I've done these a lot and this does get very very confusing here to the ends you know when you're when you're going to go about painting something like this so what I'm going to do is we're going to help find the outside edges. I'm going to go around and help find the outside edges of a flower here. We'll step in just a little bit closer here. We'll find the outside edges of a flower here and uh, with some of the values that I have in that particular area here. Now, the values won't really, you know, you can see I captured pretty much an overall feeling of the, of the shadowing side in here so far, the light side up in here. And this is going back to a shadowing side. If you have this uh, out printed out with the gray here, you'll be able to just visually check this. We don't really need to use our value scale quite as much. Um, if you're going, like I say, if you're going to air to any side, air to the uh, light side slightly, that would help quite a bit. Um, but uh, you know, you don't need to. Uh, again, you don't need to be precise, precise, because we're going to revisit this again. Okay, but this will help you, and you can just check the values right against this as you paint with this. And sometimes I tell my students, hey, just put a piece of clear plastic over it and check the values up against that. There, you know, put the color on it, check the values, and that's another uh, good little thing uh, to do uh, as well. Okay, so but remember, they do dry down. Remember, remember, they do dry down. They do dry down almost a value. You'll see that. Okay. So I'm going to take just a little bit of water. We'll come out here and as I paint down in here, I have this slightly darker gray. I'm going to go down to like a six and an eight here. I'm just going to, so I'm going to be off camera here just a little bit here, but I'm just going to take and I'm just going to soften this gray down in the six and the eight in here. And what you're going to do is you're just going to hold that up there and see that's going to be right about what that gray is right out here into that. And that's going to start as a matter of fact i just might take this is my small little uh my small little flat brush here and i might just take this with this uh six and eight just right about a seven and maybe even lean just a bit more to the six here but i might just come around here to the outside and just establish just this outside edge of this flower here this time and i'm going to be a little bit more careful now, I don't have all of my glazing done in here, so I don't have to be super, super careful, but I do want to start to develop a, a nice, nice line to the outside of these petals here. So I don't want to be quite so casual. So a little six and eight, about a seven. So here. And so I want to develop this nice line here. And so you can see it kind of cleans up uh, around here. And... Um, we uh, don't want to have any texture to any of this. So this is a bigger petal and it's going to come right down in here. And But we don't have to be absolutely perfect, but we do need to start being careful here. Okay, we do need to get some careful edges here. So I'm going to come around and this is going to push away from the light here. Put in that outside edge of that, of that petal. Now, and there's some other ones that are going to be in here, and there's other little tiny edges, like this one in this area here as I'm painting this now. I'll see, okay, maybe a little six, maybe even a tiny, tiny touch of a of a uh, three over here, just a tiny touch of it. And uh, we'll just darken this one down just a bit here. And I want to get a little bit of a jaggy edge to this here. And then right on top of that will be a little bit lighter. So I might come in here with an eight. And since it's working into the wet, maybe even a little bit of a nine, but not too much. Just enough so you can see a little bit of light detail there. And you'll see there's a, a step of a little bit of a lighter petal there. Do you see that? So you see these, these small steps. Now, there's a couple of ways to approach this. First is to just go in and kind of refine the ball of the flower a little bit more with some of your lights and darks or come in and just start painting the petals in. And since I have mine pretty refined right in here, so you see the light to the dark in here, I'm just gonna come in and start painting my petals. But if you don't have that in, you might wanna just, you know, take some six around in through, you know, coming around through here and a little eight and, and get some of your tans all the way up in the very front of this. But we might wanna just drop that in there, okay? 
so you can see I see the step of that uh, uh, that little pedal they're really easy now sometimes to help you from from getting lost I'm just gonna come around and find just a little bit that's a little light so I'll darken that down just a bit find the outside edge of this one here now there's one that's going to be right in here and you can see right in here it's a little darker and see that one right there it's going to be a little bit larger one right here that's going to come in this way and um, uh, be a little bit darker so we might want to just suggest that area and and so I might take a little six down here maybe darken it with just a touch of tiny touch of three but we might want to suggest these areas right here and why we do that is so it helps us uh, keep from getting kind of lost into the painting here. We know, okay, there's a darker petal there. And that darker petal shows up again over here. And, you know, it, why is it dark? It all depends on the position of the light, where the light is on the, on the painting. But you'll see that. And, you know, they will eventually scumble a little bit of light in and out like this onto it just... To break up that dark so it's not quite so dark. Scumbling is you use the paint a little bit drier. So, but we'll keep the edge of that just a little bit dark like that. Okay, so you'll you'll see that. Um, and I can also come in, let's take like a little three or so, three and six together, but mostly three. And let's come in and let's say, okay. That dark center of this flower is going to be right in here, and we'll just kind of tap this around. Don't put it in solid. Just kind of tap it around so that it gets a little air spaces in there. And just so you can see where you'd have little touches of the dark. So that helps you kind of see where that dark is going to be. And the whole big thing is how you're going to approach this so that you don't get lost in all of it. And, and like a flower like this, it's a little bit difficult. So... Uh, you know, you, you can get lost really easy. And so it, it might be a couple of processes. It might be you end up coming and doing this once, putting back on certain parts of your pattern and putting it back on again. That's another way to approach it. There's a lot of different ways to approach it, okay? Like you can uh, divide the flower up into um, just the major petals. Like this would be considered a major petal. This would not be. Major petals around. Put those on, then put your pattern on again and go back and put on some more petals. Okay, so there's a couple different ways in which to approach it here. Um, and I've done them all. But I'm going to just, just kind of set up some areas here uh, that I can, I can identify with. So I have those dark ones on. I know where that is. I'm going to reach out over here. There's this, and then there's going to be a dark over here. So you can see this kind of dark edge here. That will help me keep oriented here into the, the petal as well. So I'm going to take little three right into my six right there and just put on this little bit of dark that you see right there that'll help me keep oriented here and it's going to sneak around this edge of this petal here so you'll kind of see that that goes around there and it will sneak around here all the way around this side here so that helps you then it gets down to the three and six Together here probably in four and four and five right down into this area here and we'll get these petals on here first I'll put these out and a little darker down here so the big thing is just how do you go about putting this on without getting lost and I just I pick out some patterns petals find where they are and they're basically what I call landmarks or benchmarks for the painting. I like to paint like that. That's my preferred way to set up little benchmarks. So I'm coming around here like this and down into those threes and that three could even have a tiny, tiny bit of the black to take it down towards a two right down in there in that area. And it'll come around here Around this side here there we go and then we'll break that up with just a little like remember how we broke that up a little scumbling there we'll just break this up just a bit just to give a little bit of the movement there for that edge of the of the petal there so I'm actually doing these little guys right down here so you can see they get just a 
little bit of that light down there, down like that. Okay. And that soft fusion brush just works perfect on this, like that. Okay, and uh, we'll push this around on this side here. There's a lighter bit of an area here, and let's even go up. And you, again, you can check that up there, and that's going to go almost up to your eighth right down in there. And that's going to be this crossing one that's right in here is going to have a, a little bit of light stroking right across it right here. And then we'll start to darken that down again as it goes into that shadow there. And the other way to approach it is to look for its dark, find its dark, and then come back and establish its light. So you know there's going to be like an, an 8 or so in there. Just come back and tap in some of that light that there. But again, like with, with everything that we're painting here as we're painting this, don't, um, don't get texture into it. We don't want to have too much texture so that we can't change these petals later on if we need to, okay? So um, you'll see just a little bit of that edge, that nice edge of that petal there, right down in there. And I'm just going to scumble just a little bit of this. That's a little light, so I'm just going to drop it down just a touch. Just a little bit of water works so well on that. Here, a little bit of light coming around here. Check that against that. Could be just a bit lighter on the edge, so. And we'll shadow that in. Drop that in place. A little light. And maybe just a bit of light. Almost an eight right there. And it's going to, uh, get a couple of little folds, little strikes, little folds, and you'll see in there. And coming around here, this side. And we're heading up a little bit lighter now, up onto this side of the flower. There we go. And establish that again now. So this next uh, light, here's another little bit bigger one right in here uh, and it's going to have uh, you know you find kind of areas here so I'm going to work this one here a little bit of my shadow there and then that leaves me a little bit for my eight and my ten together here's this light there and then even lighter yet up towards my ten right in here Right up towards that one, right in there. Again, I get nice thick white. It's it's not real watery, but it doesn't have a lot of texture there to get that to uh, show up on that. We'll put that light, nice light little edge right on that. You can pick up, see the tiniest little bit of light and use that to help get that nice light little edge to that petal there. I'm going to come back and do a lot of that, but... And we'll push just a little shadow underneath that. And a little bit of shadow underneath that one. Let's get a little bit darker here. So, and I'll use uh, just a little water with that so it stays nice and thin. You can see you can get a nice shadow. That's a little dark, but that does help you keep oriented here sometimes by having a few of those little shadows right now that you can then in turn soften them out again. Coming around here, just, so here's the edge of my petal. So you know in, in, in good, you know, lighting that the, uh, there'll be a shadow that will come down through here. So you can put that little shadow, it's another way, and then reach out here towards your six that you have and soften that edge there. Maybe up into a little eight just to scumble into that to break up that. So you don't get shadow lines there. It just breaks that up. So it sets that, those petals right there. And um, right up in here as it's coming up 
here to the next step, you'll see that that petal will start to darken down. So we'll need a color a little bit darker. That's a little too dark. Let's get up to our six and eight there. And you're going to have to try it. You're going to have to try it. Yours might be just a bit different than mine, but we'll all be within one or two values of each other. But you got to try them. Don't get locked into what value did he use here? What did he do here? Print yourself off a good photo like this. Right off onto your copy machine. If you don't have a big copy machine, I print it off on a 17 by 11. Just take that photo. You know, you can print it off on an inkjet, which will be a slightly different, or, you know, I'm using a laser, um, you know, our big, our big photocopy machines, the same ones that you would find at your local office supply store, and just um, use those and just print that off and uh, in a black and white, and it'll give you a good, good feeling for where you, what you need to do. So I'm going to bring these two colors together here. i got to slowly dark. That's a little bit too much there. I'm going to head and slowly darken those together but it's going to pick up a little more light up in here around into your eights and down in here but it's going to head down to the sixes threes right down in here as it's heading right in here so it's picking up some light on that side here and coming right around here and I want to keep that little bit of a dark edge there that's what that one has just soften that dark edge there. There we go. And a little bit of that light underneath there, so you see that. Now, I can scumble in here, take some eight, maybe a little tiny touch of 10, and just scumble right through here just to break up some of that shadow so it's not quite as as harsh you can see this one is harsher than that one there so we just need to break up some of that shadow so i just take it ever so much in the i'm just a little bit in the brush like this and just lightly drag over the edge and you get almost like a little dry brush and a little scumbling there and it just helps break up it still doesn't get rid of all the shadow but it breaks up the shadow getting some softening and some movement into that shadow there and they use this particular technique a lot They'd have to let their paints get very dry, very sticky and tacked up a bit. There we go. That's getting that in there. Um, there's a big kind of a folded edge here, getting the eight to almost the nine or so right here. And so this big folded edge of this petal here rolling down right in there and a little bit of a shadow coming in here let's get down to our three here establish that shadow it's going to be on the edge of that petal here so again you can come in and sketch some shadows or just kind of do what i'm doing here just kind of following it along here there'll be a little bit of the shadow here so this is a petal that's coming out and it's going to roll down. So you can see it right in there. See it's coming out and it's going to roll down. So I need to express that shadow that's right there. So I'll express that shadow right there. And then I'll take a little bit of light here. A little bit of light. Try it. Now I'm using an 8 and a little 10 together. And maybe up upwards towards my 10 here just lightly brushed over it kind of roll give it in the shape of it kind of rolling a little bit like that here like that there we go drop this in right in there like that so just finding these little values going around Okay. there's another light little one that's going to come right up here and I'm just going to use some tin just kind of tap that in there with some tin a um, little bit of a dark bit of this and then this is going to come back up a little bit lighter almost a 
nine or so. Yeah, it's going to be right about there. It's going to be right about there. That's going to go there. And it's really going to come up like this, up this side here, this petal folding up. So let's just drop this in right here. And then we'll come in and add some, break it up with some a little bit of shadow. So this gets broken up here. A little bit of shadowing here. So you can see that right in there and that shadowing edge there that's right in there there'll be some little detail stuff and again it's like how much detail do you do but see that little pushed in triangle shape that I started there I can refine that just a little bit which will help round this out we'll scumble over that a bit so it softens Pick up a little bit of the edge of that. Going right in there. There we go. So see this petal comes up like this. And there's the edge of it rolling down. And this is all into the shadow right in there. But again we don't want to have just harsh lines. So we do want to soften some of that out. Just little taps of the shadow and stuff in there. And... There'll be, um, let's go in here towards my six. Uh, as you as you come in and put like this little edge, there should be a couple of these guys here, but there'll be uh, like an edge and a shadow. See that little edge right there and then that shadow right there. Right down in there. And come in. And there's a, you know, you can sit here and you can work about getting an exact copy. And I don't do that because there's a, I'm going to, I'm, I'm using this as a nice idea. And, but I'm not getting so copy of it because then that makes your painting kind of have, you know, it makes it very super realistic, but not really a lot of life. And that's the one thing uh, that I now, as far as my, as my painting career, I don't always appreciate about the Duchess that, yeah, it's super beautiful and realistic and stuff, but it doesn't have a lot of real uh, uh, brush movement energy to it. So, you know, adjust it to what you feel. I mean, I love to paint and recreate the Dutch, but I'm also an artist that likes to paint for today. And uh, I think we can take a lot of these Dutch looks, beautiful looks, and just lighten them up and add a little bit more brushwork to them and get a lot more people uh, liking them. So, but I'm just going to break this up now just a little bit here, a little scumbling. Get some of that brush mark, some of that movement in there. Uh, this has got to come up uh, here. Just a bit of this movement into this. Here. There we go. A little bit of the dark edge for this petal here. Go. But you can, you know, like there's a real super refined, like the V shape that's going to be right there. You know, how much of that actual, you know, copying of that do you put in? You know, that's that's up to you. When I was, you know, when we did the Van Els, those of you that painted the Van Els with me years ago, the Van Els, and we were fortunate enough to have a couple of, he had painted it a couple of times, and so we could look at the two of them together and how they were, um, how they, you know, how he painted one and then recreated it again, and we saw there were some that, that um, there were areas that he um, changed. He didn't worry about getting exactly the same copy again. So I've just broke up some of this area in here. I'm going to come in and establish some of my real light. There's one that's going to be right in here. Here. And some of my shadow down in here. And it's kind of like just now, it's kind of like just painting what you see. So this edge, so there'll be a light little petal edge right in there. So I, I'm more, instead of capturing it exactly and precise, I'm more like just like to capture the feeling of the flower from the light and the dark petals here. 
the edges of them here and this one here comes down here that edge comes right in there and get this down make it just dark enough to show what I don't want you to do is say okay he's using a three or something in there I want you to get the overall feeling so as this is dried down this is a little darker than what I want it to be so you can see that so I'll need to come back and lighten that up and and that's an easy thing to do is to just take a little bit of a lighter color but it takes you a few times of doing it till you get the uh, flower lightened up like you feel that it should but because these things dry a little darker so it may take a few runs at it like this to get that and then final like little adjustments on the flower too like this is coming around like this and then the original this one pops out just a little bit farther right there which is kind of nice because it breaks the plane of the outside of this one and we'll adjust that just a bit so you can see and then we'll take our dark and just tap that right along there There we go, that's better. And we'll drop some of that right onto that one again. So I'm just working only a little bit of your down into your threes and twos down there. The rest of this is, we'll just kind of break that up a bit in there. Add some movement, that's the nice thing. Just scumble it in like this to add some movement there into that flower, okay? And and every once in a while, clean some of that color out of your brush so that uh, you can uh, get back into some of the detail here. Okay. And we'll come in and establish that nice light petal that's right there. A little bit more of our gray. There we go. Little touches of the dark. We'll look for some of the movement here. It's most important to get this scumbling movement in here and it just breaks up that solid little bits of color. And it's, you know, as the flower dries, like in, in the flower's drying down in here a little darker than what I want and so I'll come back with like some of my six and it all depends on where you are in here and this and scumble back through which will start to lighten up some of these petals a bit as it's putting on some of that lighter color and uh, there'll be smaller lighter little strokes so I have that in there but there'll be smaller lighter little touches of colors Here. Working, working the details here. So I still need to get some, uh, there's some petals that are coming up kind of like this. Nice light petals. Let's get into our nine and our, about our nine, nine and tens right in here. Let's get some light petals coming in this area, kind of pulling up here. This is almost like the bowl of the like a bowl of the rose. This is the bowl of this uh, flower, this area right in here. A few little lighter petals in here and again leave some of that scumbling going on in there. Don't get too wrapped up into the details and just and not have some fun with this because you know again you know it's like we're approaching everything you can come back and refine it and refine it and refine it and that's what we're going to do you know like i say we're going to revisit this again and as we put color on then we're going to revisit it again you know we revisit it several times and so the first time through just gave it like we you know we did in the last couple of lessons just gave us an idea of it now it's refining it we're finding the and getting some petals into here and we're finding this again okay and uh, we'll need though to get this light in here several times because it will dry down and dry darker so 
that we know we have to do. That is all part of it. So we'll have to restate this several times. Here. And that's why I always say, if you're in doubt, air to the light side, because it will dry darker. And the glazing of the colors will take it darker as well. Just revisiting. I'm just revisiting a little bit here. A little bit more light through it. Yeah. But I do have that angle there, but you can see that angle here. It needs to be softened here to the outside. And I'm just going to soften that. See what a little bit of that scumbling does and just breaks up that color. Just lightly drag with this little soft fusion like this that on that surface and let it just break up that color a bit and there's some uh, other uh, like little detail light little turning petals like right in here like that and with this petals coming up on edge here so there'll be a little shadow of it right there As you work around, you can slowly start to see a little more and a little more detail to it. There we go, up like that. And but don't try to have, you know, we, we could use these and get a beaded little edge and get a, a you know, really detailed little edge. We don't want to go quite that far yet. Up in here, you're eight and six, and just get a nice softer shadow in there. But just let that scumbling take that. But it does get that little bit of shadow that helps you see the shape of the flower there. But... There's another smaller little petals and stuff. Now, so this one turns out. This one here is just coming up like this, and it's going to bend right in here. Do you see that little bend that's right in there? That we have that little bend right there. So that's okay. We have that, and it's good. It's actually a light little petal edge right there, so we can get a little more light right there and push this one right up on top. And then... This can come down this way. And so that uh, right in there like that, we get a little clearer edge of that that one happening right there and that one right in there so we'll see that and as you you know define like this and you can say okay well that next one that's going to be right down here can then have maybe a little bit of that six and eight right here um right down onto it and come down again work it again Right in there like that so you'll see that right in there so that's coming right down in there and all the way down to this and little bits of movement in here little bits of that movement in there that will suggest some movement there little bit of light back up to our 8 and 10 or 9 right back in here so you see a little V shape of that light there this goes right into shadow right into this area so let's get back down towards our 6 or so and just drop some shadow right into there for right now but it will pick up a lighter color coming right back out like I say onto this one that one in just some nice might even just pick up a little tin here and just help us find some of these there's that little V shape some little movements in here And 
little bit of So again, playing with it right in there. You can see I need a little, little, little bit more movement in there, but and this color here, this light color needs to come across here a little bit more. Scumble it right across. And this one needs to, that's the dark of that one, so I need to get some light broken up right in there. go up into our eight and nines right in here there'll be uh, so this dark will come here there'll be just this petal happening right here a nice light little touch there and then And let's get down into some of our sixes and just kind of bring those together. So you can see we're coming around and working it around and, and developing it a bit here. But again, like I say, it's going to need to go again to get it lighter, overall much lighter. Because it won't, it, it's got to get really light up into, in, into these areas. It's got to get up into those tens and... When you're painting grisaille like that, the, the white just won't do it uh, quite get there. Not uh, not once. It's going to take several times to get there. And then you also have to have the, uh, the simultaneous uh, contrast, the darks. This has got to get some darks in here to really make it look light. I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. I'm just going to glaze, just going to scumble a little bit to break up some of this and get some movement to that right in there. You can see that really does a nice job. See how that, and it just kind of puts that little sparkle that's right down in there, on there. And that's how we're gonna be, we're doing that. So you'll see like a little sparkle, like right in here. See that right in there? Just lightly scumble over that, like that, see? And that'll put that in there as well. If you get too much, just take a little shadow and take it out. Just add start and so with the you know next lesson we'll be doing some of that too as well as working up through some of the other grisaille. Well I hope to get to that by the next lesson. Because as we get into all this detail grisaille, I'm just kinda what I'm gonna my plan is here is to show you some of this detail grisaille and then you can just start taking off through some of the close-up photos and working on some of your your detail grisaille. Um, we don't need to go paint every single petal together. I'll do some of them with you. You know, so you can get a good idea of it, but we don't need to do it, you know, completely 100% together because this is just time. This is just a, this is a real good fall project to get in and work the details of the Grisaille like this. It's really a nice fall or winter or whatever time that you have in there. Not really a good summer project because you want to go outside, but, uh, you know, when it gets cold and stuff, then it's, it's, this is a good thing to do because it's just it's fun, it's just very time consuming. The grisaille details like that, just time consuming here. So we'll uh, scumble and work this up a bit in here. And then I start, you know, and what's nice about these little brushes here, and you can even use like the small point of a round. Once you get some of these in here like this, then you're just gonna come back and start to really just tap in like a little bit of the light and drop it down and scumble it down a little bit more. Don't try not to have like a, like a, you know, just a light ring going around each petal. They don't do that, but they will drag it in and out like this and scumble this in and out like that. Here. And that'll be good. And we'll so you can see as I put that light on, that's it's developing into that area here. It will need more down in through here too. This one's got to get that in there, and scumble that through. And then if you feel like okay, that might be a, you just take a little dark, put it on your brush, and scumble that in, and that'll help stop it right away. See, and you'll still get that nice little light expression like you have right there nice little light expression 
And so as I come back and, and do it again, I might hit a little bit more light. Just taps of it. See, like that. Just do, 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 do. And that just gives you such a nice little shattering of the dry brush, and we call it, of the, uh, that area. It's just really nice. And, and you can start adding like little folds and stuff to the, to the petals and to even more little details. And as you get in here, and you'll start to see as you start to come around and look through the grisaille again, once you get used to seeing it, then you're going to start to see, okay, there's a little dark edge of the petal sitting above a little bit of a light right there. So I need to get in there and get some light right up against that edge in there. And it might be just a bit too light, so I just take it down just a little. There we go. And uh, set some of this up. There we go. And the little light edges of this, this is coming through. So you see the first the first go around and then a, a go will go around again and again. I'm gonna go around several times like this, refining, refining, refining. Like I've got a real dark right in here, and that's not necessary. There's also a edge of this petal comes right back into here like this and rounds into that area there. So you know we'll we'll work on those here so use the pattern gets you a good idea then use something like this it's really nice and handy to have a nice big blow up like this that's in grisaille that's in the black and white that helps you a lot so it gives you an idea on that flower we're not done with that by any matter of means because there's still little things like here like i have that petal edge that i was bringing out there you know i'm going to want to uh, you know that i'm going to want to come out and and you know put these edges on again and again and again several times here but um let's go and let's start to work on this flower. So now you'll see we've established some dark and stuff into this area here. Now we'll come around and we'll work uh, some of our grisaille. I'll start to pick out some of the um, areas or petals that I that I see here. So and one thing to do is look, you see this shape that's right here that's on your pattern that's right there. This guy, that's this one that's right here. So there'll be some other shapes, but let's. Let's take like a little, we'll look at it like a little three and six. And again, it's just the, um, I want to keep it dark down in there, but I want to establish like this little sharp, you know, this little angle here, here like that. That's going to be, that's going to be this little shadow area right in here. And this will come, this petal will come up like this. So I'm going to paint this petal area. Let's even darken that down a little bit more right here. So we're going to hit this area right in here, which is going to be this area right here, right in there. So we'll get that shadow in. That's going to help us keep oriented to our flower. So we'll see here and we'll see here. We'll see those areas very clearly, you know, that, that are by each other. So I can, you know, we can see there's a lot going on in through here and that's going to take several times to get that, uh, you know, that kind of a movement going in there. You'll drive yourself nutty if you try to do it once. Work around then work around and work around. And like I say, that grisaille is going to drop down. You're going to have to do it again. And just like, you know, this, this flower that I'm painting up here, the first one, it's going to dry down and we have to do it again. Okay. But we can do that because this is fun. This is really fun. Let's get our thing going here. So I'm into the number one flower, which I just love this type of rose. Now I'm going to put, uh, you know, there's some details here. If you want to look, you know, into the details of it, there, you know, this is a petal that's curving up. This is part of the bowl of the rose. It's a petal that's curving up. There is, you know, a gray tone that's right here. Then there's a little light tone. It's up to you whether or not you put that secondary light tone in, the, in there right now. Um, I'm going to just take a little 8 and, and, and uh, 10 here, and I'm just going to give a little bit of movement up like this. Now, you know, do you do it? Sometimes, you know, uh, if I see it, I'll go ahead and do it because that helps me address what exactly that pedal is, okay? So uh, I may go ahead and do it. So I may just go ahead and take a little a 10 right here like this and just drop that little edge in there because I see it. So I see the little edge and I see the little edge there. And, um, you know, I'll take a little eight and take that down just a bit. 
but I see that little edge, so that's that's one way to look at it, one way to, you know, approach it. Um, we have a bigger, let's just establish some other things. We have a bigger uh, gray area over here, a little eight and six, somewhere right around down in there. And let's just establish this. And remember, it's gonna dry darker, so we're gonna have to adjust it again. But it'll go lighter, and it's gonna go right back up towards our tens in this area here as well. And we'll just bring those together. And I wanna scumble those later on as they start to, as it dries up. I'm gonna to wanna to scumble this a little bit with some tens to get some movement into it, because we want that movement. We have these going up here and this going here. Now, the other way to do it is to, uh, so we have that, we know where that is there. And that's what I like to do, establish where that center is. When I paint a, a rose, even like when I paint, uh, I paint it simply rose, I like to find the three areas of the rose that helps me from getting lost. And so I always find the center, I always find the bowl, here's the bottom of the bowl, here, that's gonna be coming right down through here. And then I'll find the outside, uh, what I call the reaching petals. So I found here is to my center, we got that, we got the bottom of the bowl, I can see that pretty clearly. Now I'm gonna go out and establish some reaching petals. Do you do it now, do you do it later? That's your own personal uh, you know, choice. Uh, I'm just gonna take, let's take some three and six, come down here, find a color that's just right about what that one is right there, and that's gonna be it. And just like we did with the Gwelder Rose or that center mom, we'll come find this outside edge here of this rose. Let's find this outside edge here of this rose here. And we'll come around like that. And we'll take a little dark down even towards my uh, ones here. Just, and so I'm just taking uh, just a little bit of the one right there, tiny little bit into that three here. And like I say is, you know, you don't have to follow exactly with what I, you know, the exact color I'm doing because it, it depends on where your grisaille is over it because you know that what's underneath it is going to be affecting the color that you're putting on top of it here because we're painting a little thin with a little bit of water so it's going to dry down and that's all going to affect it what i want you to do is watch that little photo more than anything else just get close but then it's going to dry down and you're going to have to do it again so you know you don't don't get into the exact of the values you know of it here you don't have to worry about getting an exact because that's a bit light there but uh, it does need to go over there so I'll just take that down a value or two just take a little bit of dark right into that but what I'm doing is just watching this in relation here am I getting this to dark to the dark area you know and I might even as I'm working this Gwasai you know there's going to be a real bright almost nine or eight or nine right in here that's going to be coming through and I just might go ahead and look at him when I put this light on how much darker it makes this look so you know we can't we don't always get exactly the uh, the the values you know until we get more on everywhere and then we come through and work it again as we do it because look at how that changes the effect and that's what we call simultaneous contrast that value of this light that's right there is going to make this petal look darker okay simultaneous contrast coming in there and so that's going to come right in here like this and look at it pops out this other row this other the guelda rose or the mum there there we go pops that up there but this makes the painting a little more fun to get some of this detail in like this but you can see it's <clears throat> I got like this petal that's right in here see it's dried down a little bit darker than what I want and you know that and what I want you to do is is just to come through again which I will do after we finish this lesson today 
I will come through and just scumble over some of this and lighten that up back into that position that that needs to be so it fits that. So you can see I'll need to do a little bit up in here and a little bit out down in here. It can be lightened up now. Again, especially as I get some of these lights out here, down in here with these nines and eights and nines down in here on this part of the flower. This guy right out here with this flower, which, and there'll be a nice, you know, a nice bright little, a nice little tin petal sitting right in there here. We'll just get some of this movement into this flower here. But you can see that bright that that will not brighten it up. It'll it'll lighten it up. Here, let's get down towards. Scumble in some of our sixes here, just to break that up. Down towards the six and three, down to the fives or so. Break that up just a bit. So you can see a little bit of that scumbling going on there. Yep. Let's check the eight. Boy, that's just about perfect there. That eight, and it looks so light down here. We'll just take our finger and just drag that through like that. But see how that's starting to capture that look right in through there. That's what we're going for. And as you're as you're working with this grisaille, like we did with the grapes, as you're working with this grisaille, it's going to narrow your eye, and you're going to be able to get. Uh, your eye is going to become used to the grays and it's going to be able to tell a little bit more detail and a little bit more detail. And this is one reason why go through and work it. Then after you've painted on it for an hour or two, your eye is adjusted to the grays and your grays have dried down and you can come back. But you'll start seeing more and more and more differences between the grays as your eye gets used to seeing the grays, okay? So don't try to adjust your grays perfect right off the bat, especially when you first sit down to start painting again. Don't do that uh, because that just gets you frustrated. Work through it, then your eye will become accustomed to it, and then you can start seeing a little more and a little more and a little more. Um, let's bring these right in here together. So you'll see right in here, we're gonna work on this flower and, and we're gonna to wanna to work on this flower and stuff like that, but you'll see there's gonna be a dark petal coming up against the light right in here. So as I'm bringing these flowers together, I'll be looking at that. I'll be looking at that is almost a 10 coming together here right into this area here of this one, which uh, I'll bring in there. And then there'll be the darker one there, that, down into this area. Here's where the fold of this one's going to be. So this one's going to sit on top with this grayer color, and it's going to be almost a six or so right down here, six to a, maybe even a five. So we'll take a little three into that six. And we'll put that in right there. And then we'll just drop a little, drop a little bit of that in. Then we'll go back up here towards our eight and 10 and drop this in here like this a little bit. Um, so I'm stroking out this way a little bit and stroking out this way a little bit because this is a nice, what we call transitioning petal here. So we're gonna wanna scumble it up. But again, like, you know, here I see that light edge here. There's a tiny bit of light coming right up over there onto the edge there. Do you do you express that right now? Sometimes I believe if you see it, you do it, but sometimes I also believe in, you know, don't don't work too much of the small stuff right away here, but um, that'll capture some of that, and then I can refine that just a bit. There's a this dips down in just a bit, so I can you can just take a little dark and push this in and draw with it and refine that in just a bit more in there, so that shape becomes a little bit more like that. There, let's take some of our six and stuff and just come up the side here a second. Okay, and we'll just model in here, let some of that travel, get that nice movement going on in there. And let's get some of our six and three kind of here. There's a big, and it's gonna be even darker yet, but let's just get a big sweeping shadow here. That's gonna see that big sweeping shadow here that's forming the bull petals here. Let's just kind of drop that in. Kind of say that that's there. And then there'll be some of these light petals coming up this way. 
some of that movement here. And so now you can see your target area here and here, and then you have that edge here. Now you can see these, this area here, there's uh, these particular petals. So this is this one that's bending here is going to be right there. And then there's this angled one here that's going to be here. And you see that point of that one that's right there. So it's kind of like finding it. But you can see I missed here on the, uh, once you start to angle it, you can see, okay, well, there is another little petal that comes out right here like this that I didn't have. So, and you'll find those. I mean, we can't, we can't get every single one of them on there all the time, but that's easy to add in there. So that's that little guy that you see right there. See it right there. It's easy to add in there. Just take a little light, go like that, and a little shadow, and boom, that petal's in there. That's why it's easy into this area here. If I say, okay, here, right down in here, let's just say this is a six, maybe a five. Let's look. And that five is going to work fine right in here. Six and a three together right down here. Make it like a five. So I will take like this area here, this whole area, because there's so much going on right in here. I just might say, okay, I'm going to start out right here like this with a five. That's my deep shadow that's going to be there. And then I'll go up with my maybe eight or so. This is hitting the light right there. So eight to a nine, even the edge of ten if you want to. And just come in and start saying, okay, here's the smaller little petals in there. Just using the corner of this small little brush and start saying, there comes some petals. So you can use just the corner. See that light little edge of the corner. Make sure you don't have too much texture. Um, but you can use that to help say, okay, here comes some petals out. Anyway, sometimes that's easier and quicker to, to make petals that way. Put in just a base shadow and then work petals around that way. Sometimes that's easier and quicker. And uh, overall, act sometimes more accurate than it is to sit there and work some of these many, many, many times and try to find every single little petal and driving yourself nuts by trying to get every little detail of every little petal. It's easier just to start getting an area and start capturing the feeling of that area. And that's what you want to do. So let's just capture the feel of that light little petal right there. We'll take a little five and drop in its little shadow like that. Then it's going to have another one sitting right up in front of it. Right in there like that. And you start to capture that feeling of that movement of right into that area there. Now there's smaller little movements, like little out movements here like this, which we'll give that. And we'll probably have to adjust that quite a bit as we start to uh, get into more details there. But um, there's this big folding one that's right here. Um, and I want to address that right now. There's a, let's start out with some tin with just a bit of eight in there like this. And let's just drop this whole front of this pedal in here. That's this big folding area right here. Okay. And... Um, little bit of shadow let's get back into some of our fives so nice deep little bit of three shadow in there even down into your three and one right down in there nice little deep shadow add a little bit of movement here a little bit of light movement here we go let's move that in and out a bit okay and then the petal itself here is going to be a lighter little edge, so there'll be some more shadow. See that shadow that's right underneath there? So let's just take a little three, two, and I mean, excuse me, a one and a three to make it like a two. And let's just establish that nice dark that's coming right along there that we know is there. And there'll be other little, uh, other little points of it and touches points of it. So we'll uh, hit little areas of it here. Some of it right down in here. Now, some of it you put on, and um, you know, you, like I say, there's so much going on here. You start to capture it a little bit, and then you might have to come back and make small adjustments. And you know, like you see little ins and outs here. Of this you, you make small little adjustments. 
Here, boy, sure shows you the ants that he put on in there, too. Yeah, they must have had very long winters there. Lots of detail. Like I was telling my classes this summer, though, it was, you know, when, you, when you're when you working with the Grisaille or Dutch painters there, they didn't have television. This is their TV. So they put a lot into it. They're the uh, CGI artists of their day. <laughs> you know, you look at all they we do with CGI and everything today. Now I'll add some movement in here with that. So you can see that you can see that kind of stroking out movement there like that. So if I want to capture that feeling, I want my brush just with a little bit of color and stuff like that to move that that direction out like that. And we'll just capture some of the the feeling of that movement there that you don't have to get it exact but you can get pretty darn close with it we'll take a little bit of our dark here in like that there we go and again I'll just find this kind of shadowy area here and I might just go ahead and just, uh, you know, express it a little bit and then come in and refine that a little bit more uh, by adding a little edge of it, adding the edges there. So I just take that little edge here and draw that little edge of that petal and just put in a mid-tone of a gray in between there, like a three would probably fit right in there. But that's that three is going to be too dark into the final, so I'll probably have to come back and lighten it again. But I'm not afraid to do that, to come back and work this the hole again. So there'll be an edge of see that little long reaching petal down here. You gotta remember, as petals get further out on the flower, they get they get uh, actually wider across the the bowl of the flower. So a little bit longer one there. Go into some eight, maybe touch into a little ten here and there. Just make sure you don't get too much texture in there. So if you need to change it, you can. This little two just works perfect for that, establishing that area there. It's really quite nice. And this what I thought was a dark little shadow right there is actually a little ant right there so I'm going to uh, get back into some of my threes and fives and we'll have to put an ant in there later and we can work some of the grisaille like so this is what this one here is just going to come up on top of that one the edge up on top of that one like that And this will come up. And then we'll uh, put in a little bit of our six and so in here. That's a little light, so let's drop that down with a little three. Here, that's going to come up underneath that right in there. And again, we can adjust through, you know, how much, you, how much you're adjusting in there is up to you, but it's... You know, you're going to do it a couple times, but I'm just going to adjust through here and adjust those uh, those values together there just a bit here. And we'll pull this through out like that. And so I'm pulling some of the movement out like this, and then I can come back in. And so I can, I can still see that I can come back in with a little three and a maybe a touch of the one in there and just tap in some of the little shadows that I have there as well. Here. Here like that, that might be too much, but they, uh, you can use these little shadows like this so we have some, you know, this one's gonna come out and around like this, so you see that right in there. So you know, I have that shadow going there. That. 
little bits of it. This they'll do quite a bit, especially onto these center roses and stuff. Quite a bit into the grisaille, these little values like that, and you can see it really does add a lot of depth into that wool. And you know, but it, again, it's as your eye gets more and more in tune with the grisaille. Here, not when you first start out, it gets more and more in tune with the grisaille. You'll start to see more and more and more that uh, you know as you're going. And you can see here that this dried down here. I'm going to take out some of this gray. Uh, this dried down right in here, so I might take a little bit. I know I have to get my one, my ten, excuse me, right up in here. So I'm going to want to re-express some of my ten right in there. And that tan will be, you know, expressed right back up into the uh, my parts up in here as well. Like I say, this is what I, I will come back and do this part of the painting several times. So, you know, expressing those lights back in and out like this. And then working those out a little further until I start to really get these flowers up as light as they need to be. So you can see down through here, dried down a little bit darker than I want it to. So I just come back and work these lights again. Here, like that. Here, like that. Here, a little bit into those and we're getting, we'll we'll continue on here not quite as dark a shadow that you see here but there's a nice deep shadow right down over here probably more like a three and I see that just right here on your pattern you got a nice version of that right there okay um, it's going to cross right down here across this big petal reaching right in through here like this and some of it right into the uh, Top part right here. Little bits of the V shapes of it right there, but that's not quite as dark as those. But you can see that uh, you can see those shapes right in there. And we'll soften some of those out. Let's grab some of our H. Now, as you're pulling up here, here, and I'll hit, I hit a little bit of that, but you can look here as you'll start to see little veins of the, of the uh, actual petal, the little ridges into the petal. And so that tells you the direction at which you have to stroke as you try to put this on. So this has got to go this way because I see those veins going that way. So you want to use the, the angles of the brush this way. So you get some of those, that veining that you see right there, you get it going the correct way. And then there'll be the next little part right up here. Just kind of use the edge of the brush and get some of that veining going the correct way here. And I'll restate that shadow here. Right down in there like that. And so I'll work a, a little bit of the, uh, let's do a little softer gray, like a six and eight here together. Put some of that on here. And, uh, Then I'll come back up to my eights and my tens here. And we'll put those edges on a bit. And again, I if I get too much with that, then I'll just go back and uh, touch it with my uh, shadow. Nice movement there. And so up in here, some of the shadow right up in this area, I think, Probably a six or so towards the final would be nice. Um, you know, it all depends. And that's might be, uh, you yeah, know, that's probably about as dark as it gets right there. But that's the easiest and fastest way is just make a nice black and white of this, of the, especially on the rose. On the grapes and stuff, you know, you can do that. And, and it's nice to have that. But boy, on the roses and stuff where you have all these little petals, that's uh, those are nice. That's a, it's a nice thing to have when you got all these little tiny petals here. So we can uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to put this light right up in here, some of that motion there. Here, some of that light right in there. Again, you're going to have to hit it a few times. And um, we have this, this is that folding pedal, bigger pedal right up in through here. So there's a big folding light right here and then it just dies away. So, and it comes back out this way. So that's going to be this big guy right there, okay, so, and there'll be, um, let's get to eight and six together, let's just drop this, that's about what it is, maybe a, that's a bit light, maybe, get a little more six down into that, and then drop the shadow in a little bit more three into that, drop it down a little bit darker. Yeah, it's really nice to have that photo like that of that just printed out like that on the glissade. Helps a lot. But it does, you know, it it's also really great to um to uh be able to see it through the colors, you know, so, you know, the final painting, the color painting, because you're going to have to develop that with your eye. We're going to have to get there before we, uh, you know, before we finish up this painting. We're going to have to get there where we can see it. Now, as I come in here, I have this nice little folded edge in, in there. There's going to be a little bit, let's get uh, just a bit of the shadow showing in there, but and with our six and our three, just so it's a little bit of a shadow. But then there's a, it, it's got to be a little bit lighter because you can just barely see that there's a darker, slightly darker petal sitting on top of it there. So we've got to get a little bit of light in there. And then we go back to a dark again to suggest this other petal right there before it heads into the bowl part of the flower which will get our 8 and 10 together here to bring back up and suggest the bowl. There. There we go. This will take several, several times, several hours. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable because you start to see the shapes of the roses come together. I mean, you look at how it changed from where we were, you know, where we were to where we are and how it's going. I mean, it really does change quite a bit here. Let's just bring in a little bit of that shadow there. And just walk a little bit of that right up into our light and just just push it back and forth. You can see I just used that brush ever so lightly. I want to I want to preserve some of that movement. Now this you know in an in actual rose, this petal's coming up here. It's got a curve in like this, so some of that movement has to actually point towards the center. And that's always try to remember is some of these petals have got to go in and point towards those center here because it's cupping in like this and towards that center. So we have to take a little bit of light, even some of our tan, our white, and just point those over towards those centers. So we might want to point a few of these over towards that. Some of that motion has got to point over that way. Then get a little bit of our shadowing in there. Find that big major shadow again. Right in there. Get some of our eight. That's all more out towards our eight right here. Let's get our three down into the shadow of that again. Right down in there. So you can see I'm working on 
this petal right in here, this in this area, this shadow, that petal right in there, and that area, next shadow. So it's got, I've got it a little bit pointed, but I'll just round that ever so slightly. There we go. I can start putting this area in here of the lights. You can see that. Let's get eights and just a little bit of our tens. We get towards a nine. Let's just drop one right in there. This outside edge right in here. That one. So you can put it in with there with the light and come back in, pick up like a little three or so, a little shadow and drop some of that in. As this is coming around and rounding in here like that. Little ones that are kind of important to get, like that little V shape that uh, that's coming right in there, you know. You just establish that little V shape like that. That's kind of nice to have in there. That helps keep you oriented where you are also in your painting. You know, put some of those in every once in a while. So we'll drop that in, and then we'll come right around here and drop some of this other uh, edge in this way here. And drop this in. And around there like that. And then we'll drop some into the center here again. Just kind of scumbling this in. This is the this is the there's going to be a, a folded edge in here of this petal coming in. But this is kind of like the top edge of the bowl right in here. So we're going to want to scumble some of this in like this and uh, drop it in and around here and. Then um, we'll put in some of our shadow, which is that. There's another little tiny light uh, light edge line right here, which is that guy right there, a little V-shape light line. And again, it's, you know, do you put it in or not? That's, that's your own call. Do you put that in? But it... Uh, We'll need to have a little bit of that, that movement there so you can see. That's that area right in there. Okay. And some nice scumbling movement in here. It's getting there. Still need to get these um, other ones. This one, this area here gets kind of pressed back into shadow a bit. And... We'll do that, just press that back into the shadow back up in here and then put on just little edges of light, little eight and uh, tens and get some of the light back in there. There we go. And we'll get some of this edge of this light in and get some of that movement to those petals. There we go. That kind of joins up here, um, right in here. And um, you know, that band of light that comes through is going to hit right in there, right across like that. Band of that light from the... Moving it around. You can kind of see it there. And again, we're going to have to work that a couple of times, probably. Um, getting out here, we'll see, you know, we can start saying, okay, here comes the, the light of this out, the movement of this petal out like that. And it gets this nice darker... Uh, shadow in there so this is a little darker here and then a little lighter the the dark sits on top of the light you know and that's the one thing so here's the light petal is back behind the dark sits actually on top of it there there we go that goes on there a little bit of a light edge to the petal out there and uh, we'll scumble a little light into that to break that up I 
That's a bit light. Go back down to some more six. And, but you don't want to put on just a solid value. You always want to have a bit of the color moving through, a bit of the other uh, color scumbled into it so that you get this nice movement. So this pedal's curving up. This is a bottom bowl pedal. You gotta imagine it coming from underneath and lifting up. So you're gonna want a little bit of that scumbling movement doing that uh, to it. Showing up like that. Okay. Coming up this way. And a little bit coming around in there. And that light little edge. A little edge of a petal going here. There we go. And so I'm I'm coming in now and I have some of the majors filled in and and you know some of my movement I'll adjust the movement of, of the, the coloring of some of those major petals a bit here and then I'm coming in and refining them one more time times with a little dark sometimes with a little light adding smaller little bits in as well there And down in here, some of those nice darks. Little bits of it skipping around in there. So it's starting to capture the, uh, the feeling of it. But again, I'm going to need to get, you know, I really need to get these uh, lights. This has really got to get light right up in here. And so... It's going to be really a, get a lot of that white up into this one, a lot of that into here again, painting it again, getting some of that, that real white up in here while still having some of that movement. So you just hit the white and then hit the other colors again. So you'll have these. So it's, this out here is going to be very white, very much tan here. And then, you know, adjust it back a little bit with some like eights and so. There. And we'll have some nice white streaks Coming back up off this one. So again, it's work it, then come through and start to lighten it up again. Working through again, lightening it up. Here, like that. And lightening this up here. There, like that. And then it just, it you know, you go around, you look at it this slowly starting to diminish down. So this will go into some white right here and then slowly hit to your H, to your sixes. As you come around here uh, to this side, maybe that's a little quick there. So we'll just, and that light will diminish down just like if this was like rounding a ball here. And it does, but again, we want to, as we do this, we want to preserve our movement here. We want to get some of this scumbling, this movement, but that's what you got to do. Just, just refine it again and again and again. Coming around, getting it lighter, lighter, lighter. And once you get this all on, then it, then it affects the other one and you go back and you work the other one again. We'll come on. We're going to uh, continue on and work uh, some of these other areas right in here. because so we want to get this flower on here as well, uh, following exactly the uh, the same types of uh, the same technique here. You know, you start to say, okay, what is my gray into that area that's there? It's like a, 
an eight or so, and so we can establish some of that. This flower will go very white, um, especially where these flowers all collide. They're going to get a lot of light right up in here. Big movements of white here. But again, try not, and I got a little too much paint there, a little too much texture. We don't want to get texture. Don't want to get texture. Go. We don't want that texture in that. So we're going to just keep this light here. And a little bit of that shadowing coming in there. Okay, so now what? So right in here you see in that main shadowing that's right into here and you know a little bit of this movement in here to the round but this is like a small and here's the very center opening of that uh, one right there which we might want to take a little three or so and just come right in and just tap that in tap the movement of that in and here and then we'll uh, come back out here with some of our six and so and say okay here comes these shadowy petals right out there and this guy right out there like that and then we'll put on the little edge of these petals here but they come very close the the whites come very close and almost and contact each other like right up into this area here so I, I want to capture that that's a nice formal movement of the two flowers coming together here so we want to be able to uh, capture that state that here just grab those two coming together there boom that and right into this area here there's they'll have that little bit of gray down in there but there'll be a um, another little shadow swinging right here and then little petal edges it's coming up and around here and these two will go formal again right in here they'll touch each other and make sure that you get those little formal areas like that because that just keeps the the where well, they Formal means that they touch each other, and so you want to make sure that you do capture that um, because see how that ties the three together there. So we do want to capture that feel, that feeling of that. There we go. Drop this petal in there, like that. This one comes around, it's gonna be a light, a dark one sitting on top of a light one here. We'll drop that edge in. Some light pulled around. Light little uh, rounding part right up here, which is like a tiny little bowl to the rose. And then it goes right down into like some six and so shadowing right in here. This little flower. Our little number two flower here. And little, um, so I'm, I'm shadowing in here with a six and I think that's pretty good, but there'll be little edges of petals here, little tiny ones in here, which I might 
catch with the next, uh, you know, after this sets up and dries, I might catch a little bit more of them with the next run of detail. Because we do it again. A little bit of the shadow here. A little light. And then we get to a little bit of that light tapped in here. out and around here to the back boy that's just like a six so we can come out and define this now we we do have to do some darker glazing and stuff in here and a technique that the Dutch do called houting we have to do that as well but this little six works back here all depends on where you are you, like I say it depends on you know um, if you have yours too dark you might have to step it up a little bit but We'll add some movement to that right there. Some nice petal movement here before we define that up into some other little petals. But I like that six uh, shadowing in here. That's working quite nice. Right in there like that. That's looking pretty good. And then this taken, we want to capture just some nice uh, movement here. There's another little petal there, a little bit. You know, I don't, I don't worry about getting every single little petal exactly copied in, but you know, you can like the little edges. If you see it, you can go ahead and do that. But you know, it's not like a major goal of mine to get all of that copying done in here at this time. I, if I do it and see it, and I want to take a second to do it, then I'll go ahead and do it. But uh, it's not like a, a driving force, in other words, you know, it's, but other things I'm concentrating on. Get some of those in there like that. And there's more, there's um, like little rosebuds and stuff like that we can do. There's, uh, you know, so I, I would let this completely dry go through it again in the old days or what i used to do before i would you know sometimes give a coat of glazing medium or sealer in between um i'm not doing that these days because i like to keep this matte and the matte grabs on the matte paint of the heritage you know the next layer grabs onto it and it keeps it very very nice there is something to say about separating the layers but we're going to do that with color um, so you'll see some Grisaille artists will say, okay, let's just separate this next Grisaille with this one. And then, um, you know, does it give does it give some depth? Yeah, it, it can. It can, but it also make it a little bit easier to, uh, a little bit more difficult to get the matte part of the matte painting right now. And it's not really all that necessary. You can do it. It's just, uh, you know, and different artists will approach it differently, you know. So I approach it now in the last few paintings that I have done of the Dutch where I don't do as much glazing and layering of those in between like I do, um, you know, like like I do now. I just don't do it like I've done in the past. So it just to me, these, uh, you know, it works fine just like this. I'm going to work a little bit on this one here. I'm going to establish a little bit of the... The deeper parts of the shadow here that I see here and uh, so with my three with a little bit of one in here I'll have that deeper parts of the shadow um, up to the the lightest part there's probably up into an eight or so here it is you know six to eight that's a you know, this is going to dry down here, so I'm going to try to hit it with an 8 and, and just kind of scumble those together. It's um, right in between. It's, you know, 8 might be a little light. We put a 6 on there before, so um, it's, all, it's going to depend on, 
you know how much it dries how much it dries down here six to an eight right in there if in doubt seven it is a bit light pulling away from that just a bit but back to our six and some shadowing color in that so that'll give a little bit more shape and stuff to that uh, particular rosebud coming in there give a little bit of movement here you know but it and it's probably it's probably without my value scale right here it's right there i can look at it. it's probably a six or so especially as we get that value as we get that background down that will better glaze down but again like i say if you're going to make a mistake make it to the light side it's better to have it as an eight than as a five okay so it's better to make the mistake to the light side here so let's get some of this Calyx in here, and there's some septals there you can drop in. We want to get those in. Let's uh, get our eight and our six together here and get a nice round kind of ball here. Nice round ball to that uh, part of that one there. There's a light little edge. And you know on this, on this, on this right there, boy, that eight just is hitting that just perfect on that that edge right in there. So I just might make sure I have some eight right in there and get that. there and a little bit of that six or so streaking up through here the back side of that one there little bits of that eight and so this little light movements of the edges of folding petals here so we'll just kind of suggest some of those right there and uh, some of that movement here this kind of rounding movement there little bit of the uh, the movement crossing this way like this because this petal is coming out folding I'm gonna suggest a little shadow there but the movement of this petal has to be folding out like this which is good and um, then a little darker onto the leaves so there'll be a uh, little rounding shape even like even a three or so here little rounding shape which is going to be the leaf right there just make the leaf so you can see them. a little bit of light on the calyx to help round that bit but down to your threes even down the three with a little one here for you know down in this nice deep shadow where this is coming together here that and um, you can drop in uh, some of the um, you know the leaf shapes that we have here we have those on the pattern here this time and uh, right down in through here and so you can uh, put on the first bit of that working there too I have a little bit of this back turn flower here and then uh, I also on the pattern this time I have this guy up here which is just working some of those points just working the points of the flowers with some of the glossai we can start getting that in but um you know, the leaves and stuff that you did here we have the leaf has a, a couple of parts to the glossai to it so if we're going to look at a leaf you know we have the tip of the of, of this out here and we'll just find the nice uh three and uh a little bit of one there, nice shadowing in here, and just model this up. Maybe you can get some one in that to help shadow that up here. Um, there's little bits of, of points of shadow in here in the, into the uh, leaf that we can put in, which are the actual shadows of the veins and the folds of the leaf here. And so like this one is going to have a major shadow here. 
as it goes out this way it's going to have a major little shadow a major shadow there and um another fold here but you know it's like i'll, I'll i'm just going to make a quick statement of these i want to really um really want to get the flowers in before i get you know really locked into the leaves but in the dutch painting like this the leaves are are kind of important and that's why they put so much into them so we can uh, put some of this light color here right out in here and this is a good six or seven right in here follow where that um leaf is uh gonna be in the light edge of the leaf right out here like this as that drops around here like that and move that just move your brush with the flat of this right in here like this and just move these in and out just a bit like this to bring those together yeah then start to a, a little feeling of the leaf just use the brush this kind of flat like this and just push the color in and out flat like that and uh, you can streak some a little bit. But this is just a, a, an initial setup of the leaf. Now, the leaf has uh, all, all these little kinds of points out onto it. The final detailing of it does. And as you're first putting in on here, you don't have to have all those little points. But um, we're eventually going to want to have those in there. And we're just going to scumble up some of this as we set in. And push some of this color in. So it's going to follow the same thing. There's the uh, actual vein life and line of the leaf, and you can use the edge of your uh, uh, brush there and just, you know, lift it off with a little bit of shadow since I had a light stroke there. Or you can come in with like a little eight. And the chisel of the brush or even use like a little point of around and, and start to the actual vein line of, of the leaf there as well um, and this and these veins get lifted up quite high here so but paint them in here's a little six or just a little three in it here we'll and again, we probably will have to change some of this as we get more glazing in but this just starts some of our uh, detailing to our grisaille. Okay, so um, we'll come through, we'll work these flowers. I'm going to work them again. Okay, uh, I'll come through and work the, the values of them again. I definitely want to see white up in the very center of that flower because that's the, you know, up into the center of this big open rose here, which I still have to put a little bit more in to help it get nice and round. And that big one there Go through, work them again, and work them again. Get some whites into those. Keep these colors absolutely flat. So if you run your hand over mine right now, you feel absolutely no texture whatsoever. So we want to keep that that way. We want to preserve that, okay? Makes it easier. So we'll get that all on. We'll work uh, work some more lights, get that up again. And then next time, we'll continue our grisaille on, uh, on up through the top, working into some of the beautiful tulips and some of those other accent flowers, okay? Thanks for joining me this time in this lesson. We'll see you next time here at the Jansen Art Studio. And again, as always, if you want to try some of these other techniques, I have uh, lots of the other mignon, big, beautiful mignon, and uh, and uh, big Van Hyacinth series of, of the Dutch up onto our uh, jansenartstore.com, okay? Till next time, see you back here at Jansen Art Studio. Get a lot of this detailed grisaille on. It'll take a while. Work it a couple of times. See you next time. Bye-bye.